<laughs> and we are live. Welcome once again, everyone, to a uh, Code Next House dev stream. And uh, I'm Jens Erik. I'm your community manager. Uh, sitting alone in our uh, lovely, cozy little streaming room in our Oslo office. But joining me all the way from his uh, studio visit in Durham, North Carolina, it's Alex, our lead designer. Hello. <laughs> It's uh, it's good to it's good to have you on the stream again, Alex. It's good to be back, friends. Yeah, and it's nice that we have this, this like uh, this, this all this technology that can just like bring I'm you. I'm honestly over I'm here. astounded that this is working as well as it's working. Yeah. It impresses me every time how much progress we make with this setup. Yeah, I mean it's uh, we we do it every week, so it's uh, mm. we're, we we've we've gotten oh, really? we've gotten some good hang on this already. And uh, yeah, I know that Alex uh, is sitting in front of a green screen right now. I tried keying, in, keying out the green screen earlier, and it just made half of Alex sort of like weirdly translucent. <laughs> so ah. I didn't want Alex to look like a ghost <laughs> in half the stream. Spectre. So I figured uh, we would just leave the green screen as is and, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, deal with it, I guess. Mm, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Alex is over in uh, in uh, Durham in North Carolina because uh, we're, there's there's some meeting stuff that's happening with the team over there. But uh, you're still lead designer on Conan Excels, in yes. case yes. anyone was wondering. Yes. And uh, the idea behind this stream was to do another sort of post-update mailbag, uh, which we've done. We've done one of these before. And I thought it went well, right? Did it? I think it was pretty good. Yeah. I it was fantastic. I had loads of fun. I exactly. Had, like, it, it, it's just nice to riff with the community, especially. And then they get people get to see that we're not we're not um what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. A cop, corporate monolith that doesn't listen to people. Exactly. Right. I had an amazing experience yesterday. Um after shooting some guns, <laughs> we went to drink some drinks. We met an amazing individual called Walter, mm -hmm. and some stuff happened. Right. Um, but Walter, if you're watching this, my friend, we'll take care of you like I promised. We'll keep in touch. <laughs> yeah, so you, during your studio visit yesterday, did one of the most American things there are, which is getting drunk and shooting guns. Yes. Not necessarily in that order. Not in that order, but yeah. yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, you can't shoot guns in Conan. You can shoot arrows, but you can't shoot guns, unfortunately. Yes. Unfortunately. Uh, Unless we add it. That would be a bit too modern, <laughs> I think. I mean, we cut our crossbows. We did? We yes. cut our crossbows, and then we introduced guns, I guess. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the point was to, uh, the point of this is to sort of um, answer, uh, you know, different queries and topics that people have. Or you know, one that people very much like. Yes, uh, yeah. because, uh, you know, there's uh, there's stuff going on recently that players have, Absolutely, yeah. have opinions on. And, oh. uh, so I guess we can... I guess we can do like the the first like major big one uh, first. Let's do the big one. Yes, which is the movement changes. Right, uh, we're gonna crank it up harder. <laughs> Everything needs to be slower. <laughs> slower. So the the thing we did last the the thing we did last time when we rolled out uh, the mount build was that we introduced uh, momentum based movement, which meant and I'm actually gonna. Uh, uh, no, I'm actually not going to switch over to, to the mm. game view just yet. But which meant that when you when you started moving, when you started running, you had a slight pause until you get up to exactly. to full yes. speed. Yes. And uh, we had, we got a lot of feedback, positive yep. and negative. Uh, and a lot of it was and neutral also and neutral as well. People were on the side like, yeah, we see what you guys did. Yeah. I don't really agree with it. I mean, maybe it was a bit too heavy handed. Maybe it was not too heavy handed. There was a lot of that also. So you got a lot of extremes yes. and stuff in the middle. And uh, uh, we also did some changes to uh, dodge rolls, which uh, made them a little bit slower and a little bit uh, uh, shorter, I guess you could say. Yes, like you yes. don't... They're no longer technically usable as a mode of travel. Yes. They are. But the, we, we can discuss them more specifically. It depends which subject you'd like to tackle first, my friend. Yeah, but I think we can, I think we can take the, there's the movement and the running mm, first Absolutely. Of all. Yeah. So... <clears throat> um, like Jan said, there is, there is, beforehand, there was very light to no, to no noticeable um, acceleration of the character. Turning is instantaneous, and it still is. Uh, movement was, the responsiveness on your input is always there. However, when you press down your buttons, your character takes a couple of seconds to get up to a full, to a full pace. Yeah. Um, that includes on the forward, on a forward movement, 
sideways and backwards and sprint. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons for why we change things. I will, I guess we can talk about them in, in, in some very um, high level bullet points. Yep. There is a document that I'm writing that is not ready yet. That will, that will be released very, very, very soon. That will go into much more detail about the, the why's and the what's and the everything else. So the movement stuff. Um, in Exiles, when you attack, your character is generally speaking locked into an animation. There are exceptions. The uh, notable ones are harvesting weapons, mm -hmm. where you can move and attack at the same time. But generally speaking, when you are when you are attacking, you are locked into an animation. <clears throat> Why is this important for movement? Well, because if you're locked in, you can't move, um, which means that people that are not attacking can move. And the dynamics that that creates um, with with extremely high levels of responsiveness means that an individual with uh, for example, an individual with a very, very good uh, latency and very good ping to a server is extremely, extremely proficient in handling other people, wherein because of lag, they get to see things faster. They get to react to things faster. The server gets to behave much more responsive for them than it would for, for another player that is maybe running on 100 MS uh, latency. If you have 30 MS latency or even maybe in some cases 15, you have a significant significantly different experience to someone otherwise. All of your actions are much more brisk and responsive. Um, because exiles, because the, because the prior to the Riders of Hyboria patch, because the game was so lenient in how much freedom players had over the control of their character, in that we did not restrict uh, turning or acceleration to a noticeable extent, people could very well fight one versus 10. This is a PvP example. I'll, make, I'll, do, I'll go through some PvP examples in a second as well. So a person that has played Exiles for a long time and is very capable can quite easily control a group of 10 other players. Um, then the question is, is that fun for the one person? Probably it is because they're very, very good. They've invested a whole lot of their time and enjoyment to reach that pinnacle of excellence using the system. <clears throat> On the flip side, is that really fun for the other 10 people? Mm -hmm. I would argue that not so much, right? Because especially when we compare it from 10 people investing their entertainment time to solve this problem versus one person, that doesn't that equation doesn't really balance out in favor of the of the engagement value of ele of the 11 people altogether. So it's very much skewed. This is one of the big reasons why we want to touch on this where where you can superstar very, very, very well in Exiles in the current, in the previous prior to Riders of Hyboria implementation. Now things are a little bit more skewed towards the group of players. Um, this is this is all about this is our thinking, right? We're going to talk about the specifics in a bit more detail. Let me talk about the PVE for for a second. The PVE people will say that for, we did this for PVP, which is not really true. We did this for a for a, for a, for a, for us for a sleuth a sleuth. We did this for many reasons. Uh, <laughs> PvP was one of them. PvE is another one. But really, this is for the betterment of the game as a whole. Yep. I'll touch on crafting and harvesting uh, after PvE. Um, the reason the movement changes. No, in fact, no. Let's 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 take this from another angle. So, in Conan Exiles, prior to the update of Riders of Hyboria, your character in PvE was never really in danger. At any moment, unless something catastrophic happened, as in you were stuck in a collision or up against the wall, you could turn your character and run away. And there would be no consequence. It was just that level of safety. Um, people have been accustomed to this for a long time. We, back in the day, I remember, we introduced hyenas with, <clears throat> with snare on their attacks. And all of a sudden, the immediate feedback we got, the immediate feedback we got was that, hey, hold on a second, I can no longer run south to north to east to west anymore and do it safely. No, 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 no. So I'm going to say that the intent from us is that Conan Exiles is not a safe game. It's just unfortunate that it's been this way for a very long time and people have been accustomed to it for a very long time. Fundamentally, if a player is this safe when they engage in PvE content, it radically devalues the PvE content. 
to a point where it's questionable for us. When we see what players do with the stuff we make, we will ask ourselves, is it really worth our time mm. to keep adding this stuff when people, all they do is they'll find a loophole, press a few buttons and abuse the crap out of it. And then afterwards, if we create mechanics that challenge them in a meaningful way, people throw their hands up in the air and say like, oh my God, I can't run away from this boss fight. Terrible fun con. Why did you guys do that to me? We should, um, uh, we should maybe uh, watch our language a little bit. Oh, so people excuse don't, me. Don't think we're trying to like talk negative about them. But, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, so, no, no. Sometimes changes take getting no, used to. Let, let me say this, right? Yeah. Um, this is, this is, this is, I'm not at all complaining about what players do because I would do the exact same thing. Yeah. People follow the path of least resistance. That's it, right? And the path of least resistance is if you let me run away from an encounter where I feel in danger, I will run away from the encounter when I'm in danger. <laughs> That's it. That is a failure of us. We fundamentally fail to address this in a meaningful and engaging way. That's it. Yep. And now we're trying to rectify that problem. Yep. Um, now, a lot of people were quite negative about the feature. A lot of people were also neutral about the feature. For instance, we see what you did, Funcom. However, this uh, this hammer solution to the problem is a little bit too much hammer, not enough, uh, not enough scalpel. And other people are completely furious. Where, wait a second, what do you mean I can no longer run away from every fight that I choose to run away from? Or what do you mean I can no longer one v ten that group or one v five? This game I've invested so much time into, I can no longer abuse other people with my level of skill in this game. Um, that's true. However, we have to look at it from another point of view. We as a company have to see who we want to do. We, we have to support the majority of our player base, wherein we're going to take this back to the PVP scenario, where the one versus 10 or one versus five engagement mm -hmm. really should not be skewed towards the individual in that encounter. It's where this does mean that you will not be able to superstar as hard. We instead value the engagement of the majority of the people. And in that case, the majority is on the receiving end of an arguably negative gameplay experience. They are investing their time, their personal free time to enjoy a game where, and then on the opposite side, another player is investing their personal free time to enjoy the game also. However, that dynamic, that balance is very much skewed to the individual, to the individual's level of mastery over the system. And the other people cannot catch up to him because yeah. we did not do a good enough job in allowing them to handle an individual. That is because of a combination of mechanics and systems, and sometimes, in fact, not sometimes, in many cases, really a bad oversight from us because we ought to simply have done a better job by handling the situation. So that is why, let me actually, no, sorry. Let me do the, the, the resource and gathering part as well. So sure. we've covered the three big topics. Yeah. Um, a big part of Exiles is building things and to build things, you need to gather things. Um, <clears throat> I will. I will not be the first to say this, and we in the company know this is that some of our some of our economy is not very finely tuned. There are there are some specific cases where we require too many resources, too few resources. In another case, where the harvesting time for one thing is radically skewed against the equivalent or another thing. An example being black ice. To build um, black ice level three buildings, you don't need to cook the materials. You just go out, collect them, roll them, and then you get a foundation piece. The normal process for this, using non-black eye stuff, is that you have to cook it in the, in the furnaces. You have to get bricks, so on and so forth, da 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 So the actual investment time from the correct, well, what we would consider the default chain of, uh, of uh, progression through the building system, is, in our mind, right. And then you have this offshoot of black ice on one hand, that just completely sidesteps all of that time requirement that we've invested. And players just over time have come to accept that black ice is fundamentally, be fundamentally better than the normal progression for buildings because it is more easy to gather, use, and deploy. Um, why, why this relates to the movement? Well, because if you're moving slowly, it's harder for you to gather stuff. Yes, that is true. This is the inevitable consequence of removing freedom from players. This is the inevitable consequence of removing um, movement, well, increasing the, the penalties of quick, rapid, free movement. Is it as terrible as some of the 
as some of the uh, some of the threads and posts have been uh, i would say not however this is also a live game right it's a live game that's been post release for a good while now and realistically speaking maybe our approach to solving the three big problems was a bit heavy-handed <clears throat> i i would say in fact no let's do this it was <laughs> too heavy-handed right it was we failed we absolutely failed in communicating the intent behind these changes and of course what do what happens when you don't communicate people think the worst has happened freak out and start and just stop panicking or look at these guys do they really know what they're doing do they really listen to us so on and so forth um we do listen now the changes were heavy-handed i i'm sorry i don't have i don't have a uh, um, chat in front of me so it's hard for me to catch questions if there's any questions or sure. comments popping by i mean <clears throat> i think mostly what people want to know is like how like what kind of adjustments are we making sure so and i have i have a build in front of me right now so i can probably like go through like mention some of it in the way that yes, it feels absolutely. to me to play because one of the things as you mentioned like resource gathering when running from place to place yes. it felt like it took too long to get up yes, to top speed. yes especially like moving sideways it doesn't it, it, moving sideways you expect your character to do things right the problem really also stems from the fact that we have a lot of history and baggage in the game because initially conan exiles was, the, was a first person game Yep. Right. There's a lot of history. There are things that we just simply haven't had time or did not address in a in a meaningful way. Conan Exiles back in the day was a first person game way back when, and now it's something a lot more similar to how um, Dark Souls, for example, plays. It's a third person game. When you attack, you are locked in that attack. So the two paradigms are are, are almost diametrically opposed against one another in terms of what we system wise need from the game. <clears throat> But, Sorry, I'll be quiet for a second. You want to you want to show the people something, Jans? Yes, I'm I'm in game now, and I'm trying to like show off some of the like the acceleration window from full stop to full speed is much shorter now than it was right after we rolled out the update. So it takes me much like I can much quicker get up to full speed, and so mm. running short distances doesn't feel as sluggish anymore. So actually, yes, exactly. So. And especially if I'm, of, especially sorry, if I'm ahead. if I'm in like jogging speed and then hit the sprint button, that window is also a bit slow, uh, a bit shorter now, so I can much easily get up to front, uh, get up to full speed, and much ease, much quickly uh, move between uh, place to place. So let me let me let me let me let me let's set up the window frame in the box where we're, what we're to lead the discussion, to lead the conversation. Yeah. Um, we will act on feedback. We are acting on feedback. The movement changes were too much of a hammer solution to the problem and we failed in measuring the weight of that hammer and we failed in telling our community why we're doing it and what the intent of it was absolutely now we are post fact acting on that feedback how um we are toning down the amount of restrictions applied to the player um <clears throat> yes we're toning down the amount of restrictions applied to the player fundamentally we believe that this system is for the betterment of the game as a whole um for the for the because of the issues i mentioned beforehand around pve around pvp and the and the and the side effect sorry it doesn't it doesn't directly interface with with harvesting and crafting and gathering but it does affect it in that if we make things slower for players to move around then it radically reduces the player's ability to gather, or not radically, it reduces the player's ability to gather resources to move between nodes. Um, all of this, all of this appears to have happened to the, from the player's point of view, as a complete shock. All of a sudden, Phantom flips the switch, and boom, it's a different game. Yeah. Right. We failed. We failed to communicate the intent. So, for example, I know, and we haven't told anyone this, is that we will be rebalancing the economy in the near future. Right? It just it just will happen. The economy numbers will change. The harvesting numbers will change for the better of the game. Um, the players don't know this because we haven't said this to anyone. And it's just something that is tragically a habit of the of our development cycle, where we have so many things we try to accomplish. We often, in fact, not often, almost almost always fail to preemptively communicate things that we would like to change for, to the players before we actually change them. And the big reason for that is simply because we don't really know what's really going to get into a final build until it's in the final build, which is what happened with Riders of Hyboria. The time we spent working on Riders of Hyboria 
there were some good comments, right, in this. I can't remember one of the guys. Yeah. I don't think Fire Spark made a video about this where he, he literally called us out on our own failings, right? They're like, yeah, yep. we don't do a good enough job communicating because we don't. It's true. Definitely. Um, it's not because we don't want to. It's simply because builds sometimes break. Features don't make it in. And if I, for example, say that, hey, guys, by the way, next month we're going to have a new economy, and then that doesn't happen, that leaves me in a terrible place. It, it, it means that, hey, Alex, you lied to us, you piece of shit. You lied to the community. How did you do that? You shouldn't do that. Of course they shouldn't do that. But things happen and builds don't work, features don't get done. We'll try our best. So it's it's not a case of we don't want to communicate. It's a problem of <clears throat> it's a problem of a lot of legacy stuff in Conan Exiles. Because back in the day it was one game, now it's another game. And we try to get better on it. And this is probably our, gonna be our biggest learning going forward, wherein <clears throat> wherein we will go out of our way and potentially I might have to upset a couple of people in, in the company. We will go out of our way to make sure we preemptively communicate what we like to do to the player base. Right. Um, that might mean that there will be a few cases where I end up lying to the player base because I say one thing, we don't deliver it. Hey, Alex, you lied to us. Apparently it's called alternate facts now. Old facts. Alter oh. Alternate facts. Alternate facts? Okay. Yes. Uh, let's, Alternate, let's rebrand. Alternative facts, that's what it is. Alter, alt systems. <laughs> alt, alt patches. Interesting. So let me have a quick drink. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, mm. But yeah, I'm also, as people can probably see on the stream, I'm trying to show off uh, what light armor running also, looks like, yeah. what heavy armor running looks like. Also, like, if you're if you're sprinting and you're doing, like, a complete 180 turn with the camera, like, there will be a slight, like, like much like in real life, when you try to run very fast forward and then you try to turn around 180 degrees there is a slight stop when you try to run and then like get get back mm. up to full speed but that window is still much smaller now in this build than it was when we uh rolled out hiders uh, yes. riders of hyboria and the, the mounts update um so i um you know that we we saw the, the the acting on this feedback we realized there was too much of a hammer of a, of a hammer solution not enough of a surgical scalpel yep. yes um we, we are toning it back. Also, in addition, we are going to allow people to control this through server settings, right? So if people really want to, if they really don't like this on their private servers, they can disable this completely. Okay. Right? That's neat. This, this allows us a lot of flexibility. For us also, this is interesting in that um, we need to experiment with this because I don't really know if this is a good idea. I need to run this past the guys a couple of times, see what everyone thinks. Um, we might consider doing different settings for different servers. Right. Right, like on 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 a PVE server, do we need the same settings as we do on a PVP server? Maybe, maybe not. We need to consider it, right? So th this gives us an interesting opportunity. But I'm I, sorry, I don't see your actual <laughs> game screen ads. I'm assuming you're running around and killing stuff and doing stuff, and things are happening. I'm not killing as much as just like running, oh, okay. running back and forth, and so people can see what that looks like. A good, a good example is if we could maybe grab a pickaxe and go harvest some stones because everyone likes to collect some rocks. Sure. Rocks are um, rocks are everyone's friend. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, speaking of rocks, another point of feedback that we acted on was the trebuchet. Um, the trebuchet changes we implemented made things a little bit expensive, let's say, because I think we, we put the price on a boulder being at 250 stone. Yep. We are pulling that back down to 150. Uh, that is actually one of the questions that I had written down for the stream. Oh, did you? Okay, yep. sorry. No, no, it's fine. Okay. So you've answered, um, you've answered that one so I can cross it off now. <laughs> I'm, bound, I'm sort of, my brain is bouncing between too many different topics. That's fine. Uh, I think maybe we can, uh, unless you have like uh, some like final thoughts on like the, um, um, new movement stuff, I, then maybe we can like go on and see, I, ask I you some of the questions. I feel I've covered that, this situation from, from the PVE, from the gathering and crafting, from the PVP side. I, I, I can't see, I don't have chat in front of me. If someone says something, you please let me know. Um, <laughs> we talked about why we wanted to do it. In addition, there'll be a much more detailed in-text write-up that we will go through and present to everyone so that people can directly reference the bullet points and thoughts specifically that we talked about why we wanted to do it, yep. why it's better for the game, why we messed up, we did mess up, uh, how we're going to how we're gonna act to fix it. Fundamentally, we think this is for the better of the game. The problem is the way we approached it was too much of a hammer solution. Um, dialing that back, Hopefully, people become more accustomed to it over time, and then we maybe revisit this. This also, this 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 implementation that we have right now is not the magic bullet. 
It's not right. going to fix that. It's not going to fix all the problems I mentioned. That requires a lot more thinking, planning, and a lot more scalpel and a lot less hammer. Yeah. And finally, of course, people want to know about if we're doing any role changes. I think it's just like running for the time yes. being. Oh, yeah. for the, so <clears throat> let's talk about dodge. <clears throat> um, right. Dodge in heavy armor. Right. In PvP was valueless. It put you in a radically negative situation when your character would be traversing and not able to do anything meaningful until the dodge ended. Therefore, people would not you really use it because it, allowed, it was too dangerous. It did not. It did not achieve the the intent of the mechanic at all. Um, next play style: medium armor. Because light armor, the light armor dodge is so much better than medium armor. People fundamentally don't use it because light dodge is so good. It travels five meters in the space of 10 frames and it's very brisk. And it has, in fact, if I remember right, excuse me, light dodge has invulnerability frames throughout the whole of the dodge so that whenever you are in danger, you will press the little dodge button, you'll perform a light dodge and you'll be safe. You do that three more times and you have traveled 15 meters and then you start running and you are no longer in any danger. That combined with the valuelessness of the heavier and medium dodges and with the introduction of mounts, because this is, this is another problem. We'll talk, to, we'll, touch, we'll talk about mounts in a second. Those three things strongly suggested that we should revisit the dodge system. Now, with mounts, for us to make, we wanted to make an engaging mount system. That's it. We could have implemented them as a buff and a speed boost. And that would have been terribly received. It would have been very cheap for us, but it would not have adhered to the to the fiction and to the experience that we wanted to deliver to, to the, deliver to the players, to the promise that we made to the players. How can you we if we delivered a simple speed buff and set and clapped our hands, raised them, it would not have been acceptable whatsoever. I think the the like I would not have been happy to, with that feature. I would have arguably not allowed that feature to go out in that state just because of the kind of person I'm and I am. And I think that for the betterment of the game, mounts had to be a meaningful addition rather than an afterthought. So with that in mind, if players have such a radical ability to traverse the game using light dodge, medium dodge to an extent, and the heavy doesn't count because it's negligible, and because of the power innately built into the light dodge, it radically invalidates the keystone feature of the Riders of Hyboria patch. Those things combined really says to us that, you get, guys, you should really look at this, this dodging system and see where you want it to be. So we did. Now, the, we wanted it. In fact, no, let me take this from a different angle. To make dodging an engaging system and to fill the roles it needs to fill, we had to scale some things back. So light dodge was extremely powerful. Medium was not used very often because light was so useful. And heavy was never used uh, specifically because it always left you in a dangerous situation. That isn't to say that heavy armor is not used because it is on thralls and on players that play and progress through PvE content. <clears throat> so we decided we want to make a system that allowed players to choose through playstyle, choose through playstyle to cust and customize their dodge experience. For example, wearing armor determines the kind of dodge you have. Um, an interesting, an interesting bit of trivia is that the the invulnerability frames on every dodge were different. So, if you are using heavy armor, the amount of uh, iframes, I'll call them iframes going forward, the amount of iframes you have is different to the amount of iframes you have on a medium and a light. Which means that if you're using heavy armor and you switch to medium, you need to relearn the timings. Or if you're using medium and switch to heavy, you need to again relearn the timings. <clears throat> the distance you traveled was different. If I remember right, heavy armor moved you 2.5 meters, which is really nothing. It's almost, it's, it's not even two character lengths. So you couldn't effectively dodge anything because you couldn't avoid a, a hitbox. And, and you did not have enough invulnerability frames to use them to avoid the damage of a hitbox. Now, 
We want to give players the ability to customize their play style through itemization and progression. This is how this is, and this is why we we linked the agility stat to the dodge system. This was a, this, uh, the agility really stat also had a problem for a very long time where it's questionable in terms of value, how valuable it is for our for our progression system. So we decided let's experiment and see where we go. So. <clears throat> Uh, do you think I ought to explain the nitty gritty of the dodge system, Jans? I completely lost your sound. I'm sorry, friend. I can hear, I can see your there mouth we go. move. There oh, we go. there we go. Fantastic. I, I was going to say, I think it's fine. I think we might want to get to some some of the questions that I had. Oh, have, have <laughs> I been talking for too long? I'm sorry. Sorry. Let's do this. I'll <laughs> drive the boat. I'll, 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 I'll ride shotgun. It's fine, Alex. It's fine. Uh, so uh, one of the things that a lot of people were asking about were stuff like future plans, DLCs, more maps, etc. And unfortunately, we can't really talk about that now. I just okay. wanted to. Can, can, can people to... hear? Can, can people see my, my face? Yes, people can see your face. Maps. Who knows? We will see. Yeah. Sorcery. Who knows? We will see. We can't really talk about any of that right now. But if there's news, then of course <laughs> we will share that news. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, another topic that came up uh, quite a lot was uh, putting thralls on horses or dragging NPCs behind you on a horse. Yes. Um, we really wanted this feature. However, it, was, it proved to be very problematic, right? The, the, the thrall dragging by a horse is the thing that I really, really want. I don't know where, where it will happen, but absolutely. Um, Thralls on horses is a separate discussion. I, I see value in it, but as I'm assuming, like as I'm, I'm assuming, the people watching the stream play and know our game, and they know how our AI behaves. That is another subject that we need to address. So if we spend our energy for allowing you to put thralls on horses without addressing the previous problems, it would be a misuse of our energy investment. It's a nice idea, but we have to put it in terms of... Um, in terms of things that we'd really like to fix. Because for me personally, I would put more weight on generally fixing and improving the normal behavior of, of our monsters and humanoid NPCs before we choose to put humanoid NPCs on horses. It's it would be lovely to have a fleet of cavalry saddled thralls following you. Yep. I think that would be fantastic. You, it's literally a movie scene. It's absolutely fantastic. It's just unfortunately for us is there are more pressing issues that we have to handle yes that's uh, usually what a lot of it comes down to is a matter of uh prioritization and like choosing the choosing the things that we you know that we want to add and then that the community wants us to fix or add etc 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 so a lot of the things that like you people you people again uh, a lot of things that the players really want us to do is stuff that we want to do ourselves and then sometimes there's a mix sometimes there's things that we really want to do etc etc all right. Uh, da, 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 da. That's been done. Um, <laughs> so uh, from the forums, Shadoza asks, uh, I have been turning every stone and plucking every bush to the dirt. Please say a battle chicken or a chicken of doom are things that are made or found. You don't have to give it all away, but please put me on the proper path. What's a battle chicken? Uh, I think it's something Robert has talked about in terms of pets. Like they, that there might be like a really strong bird out there somewhere. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. Okay. Uh, Grunt asks, uh, will we see an AI overhaul in the near future to be more responsive with the new movement update? Um, some stuff happened. We have some plans. We are not allowed to talk about that with those plans. One of the one of the things that 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 can most benefit the game for us is having a look at the AI. Um, we will have a look at the AI. Based on what I said beforehand, if I make a promise that it's going to be within the next few months and, it, and that's not true, uh, I, then you guys get to call me a liar. So I will not make that promise. Um, you know they're going to hold you to that right now, right? Of course they will, and right? It's on the it's, internet now. It's, it's never disappears. Yeah, he said it. So it's, it's a fact. It's, like, it's an old fact. <clears throat> yes, we want to make AI better. Will we do it soon? I really, really hope so. Do I know? No. I just don't know. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Mikey asks, is the current attribute starting values for thralls and pets set in stone? Sometimes archers start at zero accuracy and whole factions, like exiles, are invested so heavily in survival they almost seem purely decorative. Um, nothing is set in stone. Everything changes. An example of this is the movement and combat stuff. Everything is subject to change. 
we have to see where we want the game to go. Um, we will see with the thralls. We will see with the progression system. There is valid feedback to, for us to act on from there. We need to experiment with and see where we want to take the system to. Okay. Uh, Drew Cuckoo asks, uh, are there any kind of inherent technical restrictions with regards to armor itemization and how the system was designed, specifically temperature resistances and bonus stats that would make it too unwieldy to make them more customizable. Uh, I'm curious to find the feasibility of making the armor system more open with regards to secondary traits. Is something firmly based in design, technical limitations that got baked in early on, before a lot of this was added, the amount of time it would take to make such changes, or some combination of it all? It's a bit of a long question, but... Wow, that's very technical. Okay, so I, by the sound of this person, there's a lot of modding. Probably. Well, at least has tried to do so. Okay, um, some cool stuff is happening with the temperature system. Um, uh, for another feature that we may or may not be working on. <laughs> okay. We will see. Um, additional properties for armors. It's a very slippery slope because Exiles fundamentally is a survival game. Um, which brings us to the following question. Would we like to add an example, for example, a system like uh, in, in traditional itemization games of adding perks to weapons, adding, adding additional benefits to weapons or armors or something else? On one hand, it is interesting. On another hand, is it really exiles, right? Is it really the systematic approach of a sandbox game? Um, we need to figure it out. We have a couple of weapons that try to do this, but generally what it means is that for us to add, to do more interesting things, we have to be more bombastic, more, more that it's like just, just do more than you did beforehand. And forever trying to go up that ladder is a very difficult thing to follow. It's interesting, but I don't, but I don't know if it's something we can achieve in a meaningful way. In terms of mechanical, in terms of technical difficulties, adding it to the weapons, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of technical difficulties, adding it to the weapons, we could do it. Right. There's nothing innately stopping us from doing it, other than the price investment of the development versus the theoretical return value of the feature to the community and the player base. And uh, yes, they were absolutely a modder. Uh, I had uh, modders in chat I, telling, I telling me that's Dr. Cuckoo, uh, who's apparently one of our more prolific modders. So uh, my apologies to Dr. Cuckoo MD for not recognizing who they actually were. Uh, all right. Uh, one topic that's gotten a bunch of buzz in uh, chat and also on the forums is uh, the matter of dying saddles. So changing I, changing the were, color scheme around. Sure, there were pretend, they were. I know there were technical difficulties, but they were relatively low key. Uh, we should do it. I think we ought to do it. It makes perfect sense to do it. Why not? Right. That's it. Okay. Yes. That's it from Alex. <laughs> Uh, Abomineer asks, uh, the new leveling system shows a lot of attributes and stats for followers. Are there still other hidden attributes to take into account, such as faction, or do the displayed values tell an accurate story? Mm. So this, this, this touches another subject that I, I have mixed feelings about. Um, right. Presenting a lot of information to the players turns the game into something else. For example, um, I like to explore the systems of a game through use of the systems just to see what happens. There are some, there are some hidden gems that people may or may not find using a potion that they do or do not know about that create interesting dynamics for the game. Um, from off the top of my head, I don't think there are many, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think there are many hidden mechanics that have a very, very strong effect on your thralls. Um, there are some, but though the effect of those is negligible. Generally speaking, that is that is the case for the majority of the game, I believe. Like not only thralls, but also for weapons and armors and so on and so forth. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. We touched on the uh, trebuchet. Da, da, da. Um, we also made fire barrage a bit more useful. Oh, cool. I think. We put pulled its damage a little bit up, so it's more compar comparable to the resource investment versus traditional um, explosive jars versus the boulder, and then on the, the demon fire barrage. Awesome. The price of the the price of the normal boulder for the trebuchet was pulled down. Oh, actually, I want to I want to talk about the building yeah. time for a normal trebuchet. So, 
there was some feedback about this. Um, why did we say that every stage of the treb production, treb production, mm. every stage of putting up a trebuchet takes 30 minutes? Why did we do that? Funk of you guys are terrible. So the thinking behind it is we did not want players to ad hoc run around, deploy a treb, and immediately break through someone's base. Fundamentally, it is it is unfair on the player on the receiving side if we allowed a trebuchet to be immediately placed, deployed in under 30 seconds with the with the abilities that it has now to allow people to blitz through it. Um, it can be argued that, hey, you guys did this for the trebuchet, why not for the explosive jars? Fundamentally, it's a, it's a question of resource investment, right? To get a couple of jars is significantly harder than to get a trebuchet and a couple of rocks. Right. So, so instead of <clears throat> jars are another problem that I, we can we probably should talk about, but maybe on a different street. So, the trebuchet. Instead of us saying that we're going to crank up the price of the treb to be resource heavy, mm -hmm. instead of saying that, we instead say, as a player, you must commit to this event, and the commitment is one hour minimum to the event of potentially attacking your opponent's base. The resource price is relatively low because it's only stone and wood. However, the time investment is pretty high, which is what which allows us to say that, okay, you can build it, but then you have to really, really, really want to do this activity. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of other problems with the economy that that may or may not be interesting for players to know about, but I, we should maybe leave it to another to another stream where we can discuss it in more detail. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, Rio Salazar asks, uh, what did the developers do or have to change to make mounts possible? I think a lot of people are wondering about this as we, <laughs> since we said for a while that mounts like weren't happening and then uh, we were trying uh, to do it again yeah. and again and then they so were happening. So. Conan has a lot of legacy. It has, okay, transparency windows, right? Yeah. Um, we did not do a Unreal game before Conan Exiles. And Conan Exiles was a different game when we started to get to the game that it is now. So the company learned how to use the engine and the technology while making the game. What that means in practice is that the decisions we made back then are arguably bad decisions in terms of mechanical implementations of certain features. Um, however, to fix them now, it is quite expensive. Any modder that has looked at base play character or AB human male blueprints knows this. Right, we can spend three months making them better, but then that means there is no features for three months. Right, that is literally like either a designer and or a coder sitting together working through this. And the question is, what does that do for the game? Is it valuable? Yeah, it's that, that that's an interesting discussion because for the betterment, yes, maybe, but it doesn't directly translate to any meaningful feature in the in the in the near term. Right, right. so this is this is always the problem that we have to balance against. And then we have Mounts, right? I know for a fact that the coder that was on Mounts, um, do you think I can mention his name? Or we'll give him a shout out. Uh, maybe just the first name. Okay, so um, there was a, a lot of people were involved on Mounts. Paul was really the coder pushing hardest for this feature. He was not alone. A lot of designers, a lot of artists, a lot of coders worked together to get this out of the door. A lot of things had to change for Mounts. Um, and because of legacy and historical issues and the sticks and stones that the game stands on, some things had to be radically changed. It was quite difficult. I don't like going into the deep, going into AB human male players will see, especially modders will see when I say going into AB human male, I mean that um, through the dev kit, right? Modders can see the challenges that we had to overcome to get them into a meaningful state and even now like he would be, he would be the first one to say like we did this because we had no other no other timely time sent no other what's how how should i say that we had no other good way to solve this problem in a timely fashion right and that's just that's just that's just development right you have a box of time you must use it in a meaningful way to deliver a meaningful feature Is that i hope that sort of covers it. so yes it was difficult <laughs> um Following on to that from uh, Disco7, who says, uh, by adding mounts, do you feel that there's now a layer of complexity that needs to be managed with every new patch? And if so, do you think deeper cuts into existing content may be required to roll out future features? I would say not cuts. 
I would say something else. So let me, let's, let's, I see where the question is going. I don't want to answer directly. I'll answer it instead like this. Um, we didn't, for example, with movement, we did a bad job communicating why we did it, what we did, and the solution we chose was too much hammer, not enough precision, not enough precision uh, scalpel. The biggest learning for us is that the communication will be addressed. And the features, the way I really see us putting more like, like game changing features, like changes to the movement stuff, the way we ought to really do it is put it into a patch, but server settings turned off. And then specifically invite people to experiment and tell us what they think. I, I, I think that is the most, the most open and engaging in terms of to our player base way that we can go ahead doing big, big feature changes that we think the game ought to have. Um, yes, that's, sorry, that's my answer. Okay, I think that's a good answer. Uh, Biggins asks, uh, our horse inherits our encumbered state. Can we allow horses to also inherit the fifth perk of encumbrance when we have it? For all the farmers out there, again, this would provide a much needed utility to the horses that is otherwise lacking at the moment. Um, the, that perk, oh, so I have a pet hate with that perk. Um, it's another one of those things that players really like, but it's actually, generally speaking, not very good for the game. Um, I'll be honest here. In, 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 I, I, that perk, I would personally like to change it. This is another thing where, hey, don't use the hammer solution instead of use a more precision weapon. And with this going forward, this is what we're going to be doing. So for transparency's sake, I do not like that perk. I do not want it to be used on horses. Instead, however, I think there should be specific mounts um, for example, with saddles, we allow you to customize your playstyle of your horse. Mm -hmm. So on that on that logic, why isn't there a saddle that that is for transportation rather than travel or offense or defense? Right? We very well could say give you a saddle with more slots. Um, <clears throat> and personally, I think that is a more elegant solution than allowing the horse to inherit the functionality from the perk. I do see where, where, well, sorry, what was the user's name? I, I, uh, that was, uh, yeah, who was that? That was Biggins. Biggins. I see where Biggins is coming from, right? Because it makes sense. Like, hey, I have this perk. It's in my, it's my progression system. Why doesn't it affect me when I'm mounted? Yeah. It makes perfect sense, right? Um, the progression system is another thing. That, the, that, that, that is right. another system that we ought to look at in the near future to make more engaging. But for me personally, i rather create that engagement for the, let's go back to the saddles and the horses and encumbrance. I'd rather create that difference via saddles and maybe specialist mounts. But we'll see. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is a, probably an easy one from uh, Undead Candle over on Reddit. Will we ever be able to throw orbs, etc., while mounted? Um, plan for now is it's not in the books. Okay. We could do it, but it. it <clears throat> It's, we have to we have to see how much value it adds to the game versus what other features we're doing. And for now, it's just it's just lower down the stack. Of course, all weapons will be fantastic for weapons off work of horseback. It's like, hey, hold on a second. Right. Why can I why can I not throw this projectile weapon on horseback? It makes perfect sense. The answer is, it's just less of a priority for us than 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 something else. Uh, another thing that's been uh, a hot topic after the mounts rolled out was uh, key bindings on uh, the mounts. Oh, yeah, that they can be remapped. Yes. Exactly. Yes, uh, we're working on it. Soon, TM. Sorry, that's a very, very non-Alex answer. We're working <laughs> on it. It's again, it's, it, it's... We had a lot of discussions, right, where we had to cut features from the mounts production and then uncut them because we deemed that the mounts feature would be significantly less if we didn't release with it. For example, right. lances and bows were on the cutting block and we did, we crunched to get them into the game. Without lances or bows, it's questionable how good the feature would be, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this is where we come down to. This value of development time versus this feature compared to this other one over here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, da -da -da. Trying to find something that we haven't uh, touched on yet. Um, let's 
So. Shooting guns is amazing. I managed, <laughs> I was shooting, I was shooting an AK. It was fantastic. Oh God, yeah, you were out yeah. shooting guns yesterday. Yes, so I was in a, in a, in a, well, down a lane and a cartridge cycled, bounced off a wall, bounced off the ceiling and went literally down the back of my neck of my nice. hoodie. I have a nice red burn mark where that cartridge sat. And of course, if you're on lane, you don't twitch. You don't sure. endanger other people. So I, I stood there burning my back through <laughs> a nice burn mark just to make sure nothing else happened. Oh, as I, I actually had something I actually had something similar happen when I was in the army. We we're at the shooting range. Mm. The, a cartridge ejected from the guy next to me and it it shot into like my face. Oh, yeah, hit, yeah, hit my I'm... glasses and bounced off. Oh, so I almost got like hot cartridges in my face. Oh, uh, my goodness. <laughs> I, yeah. A uh, final other question from uh, Mew Lee, who asks, uh, does different AI for different fighter thralls exist? Like, do they have preferred Does weapons? it exist now? No. Do I want to do it? Yes. Is it expensive? Yes. Are we going to do it soon? I really, really hope so. Sure. Really hope so. Yep. Uh, what is the difference between a fighter with 30 accuracy and an archer with 30 accuracy? So this this touches the per, this touches the progression system. Yes. Um, when Conan was released, there was no progression system at the back back in the day. So we added it, and then we have never looked at it really meaningfully uh, since then. Um, for a for a fighter, accuracy in and of itself doesn't do a whole lot. Right. Uh, at least I don't remember doing a whole lot. I need to double check, but I don't think I'm lying here. Um, this touches on the problem where not all stats are valuable for all characters. So yes, it's 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 unfortunate, but that's that's the case. Right. I can talk about accuracy for a second. I don't know if many players know that. Accuracy, not on thrall so much, but definitely on players, affects the your targeting cone for archery attacks. So the more accuracy you have, the more accurate you are shooting on the move. On horses, this is even more interesting because it's a little bit, this is a little bit gamey for me, for my taste, but it, it delivers the intent. The more accuracy your horse has in combination with the accuracy that you have allows you to more better hit characters while mounted and moving with a bow. Um, players should go and experiment with that to see exactly where they like their taste. If I remember correctly, it's, if you get it very high levels, it becomes very, very interesting. You become it really turns that playstyle into something quite special. Sorry, I, I sidejected that question completely to a different <laughs> a different area. It is fine. It is fine. Uh, da, 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 right. All right. Um, I think I have. Yeah, we have time for a couple more, and I just wanted to uh, apologize to people in like Twitch chat and YouTube chat, etc., for. Uh, you know, asking questions that we don't necessarily get to in the stream. A lot of the stuff that you've been asking has already been answered previously. So if you joined us like half an hour into the stream, then just go back to the VOD and see if we answered any of your mm -hmm. questions because a lot of the stuff that has been, there's been, there's been we've covered a lot already. And uh, just so I have it like phys visually here for and audi audibly for people to, to see and hear. Uh, mm -hmm. We are working on the Xbox crashes. We are working on the uh, arrow armor penetration stuff. Yes. Uh, we are also uh, investigating what's up with the, the paper doll stuff on the PS4, where you that like your issue. Head. Like I looked at it with some of the coders, and and it was like, oh, how is this possible? Yeah. So we are literally, it was literally like, <laughs> oh, that's not possible, yeah. but it is. So we're chasing that cat, trying to catch it. Yeah, and then there's also the matter of uh, stables, uh, uh, like pulling them apart gives you better resources back. We're also looking into stuff like that. So there's, uh, yeah, like. Everything, everything that's been uh, everything that's been reported since the update went out is, is stuff that we're looking into, and I probably forgot a bunch of stuff uh, as yeah. I was uh, saying this. So yeah. Um, all right, uh, Lara Thiel asks: um, Due to old bugs, departed clanmates, changes to the map mesh, etc., some clans have thralls that they cannot break bonds with because they cannot be located or interacted with. Uh, such thralls may be trapped below the mesh, inside a base's foundation, floating in the air, simply left out in the wilderness where no one can find them. Uh, are you able to give us any sort of support so that clan leaders will be able to remotely delete these lost thralls so we don't, that we cannot directly break bonds with? So, for, for this upcoming patch, that is unlikely to happen. 
We have a plan for a feature that will resolve some of this issue in the future. But for, for this patch that's coming out, hopefully coming out before the new year, I really, really hope so. Mm. Fingers crossed, hope so. That will not be directly resolved. That like it, like too many wheels are turning and it's it's too dangerous for us to jump in and change some stuff out right now. Um, it is a known problem and we really want to address it and it is actually pretty high on our stack of things to solve. Okay. Uh, then, uh, da -da -da. let's see. Uh, another one from Lara Thiel was that the uh, calling script has many players worried chiefly because we cannot account for lost thralls. Uh, yes. Is there is it possible to apply any sort of logic to the calling script to ensure that all thralls are deleted ahead of low level thrall? Uh, sorry, that uh, low level thralls are deleted ahead of high level thralls. I will investigate this. I don't know off the top of my head. I'll find this out. Excellent. And I think I think that's mostly it. I have one very important one from mm. Berserk. And that is, how do you feel about chocolate? Which kind? Just any kind, I guess. <laughs> okay. It's hard. I I I I I have problems with um um I like I like nice things. So if I drink, I drink a lot. If I eat chocolate, I eat a lot of chocolate. Right. So I have to I have to not have any in the house so I don't eat any chocolate. If there's any chocolate in the house, it will be consumed. So yeah, that's my problem. I very much like chocolate. I eat too much of it if I have it. My here. goodness. In the you are in the States, it's so wonderful. <laughs> it's so much variety. I was so shocked. There's so much variety of stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, I've been told that by Americans who come to work for us that suddenly there's there's much less of everything they're used to. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to see if I can find a couple more that we can answer. Uh, <coughs> da, da, da. We covered armor types. For the, for the, for the players, is that the write ups for the changes to dodge and right. the movement changes are coming. I did the write up for dodge just yesterday mm -hmm. and it's being looked over the now. I, the, the one for the movement is happening today as well. I really, really hope I get down time to sit down and finish putting everything on paper in a concise and logical fashion to where we can show it to people that because we have to be more, 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 uh, not transparent. We have to have be better at communicating the the reasons why. So hopefully players can like that. Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense, Funcom. Thanks, guys. Thanks for telling us. We need to improve on that. Absolutely. Sure, that makes sense. Um, all right, I have one one final one. This comes in from uh, Code Mage, also on our forums, who asks, uh, "What is the true purpose of the purge? Is it to act as a counterbalance to those who build too much? Is it to reward players who are active? Something else? What was the game designer's vision?" when it comes to the purge. So, um, not all of the features work the way we want them to work. For example, and this is actually quite difficult to solve, it's arguably if it's at all solvable. The decay system is meant to clean up buildings that players do not use. And it is meant to uh, control how much people build. Does it achieve that objective? No, I don't think so. There's a lot of foundation spamming that happens. So no, it doesn't achieve that its goal at all. Mm -hmm. So purge. The intent of the purge is to challenge and give players a meaningful to give players meaningful content and use of their buildings other than fantastic looking buildings that they can hide stuff in. Fundamentally, we wanted the purge to engage the players and at the at the at the building crafting level rather than at some other level. Um, it doesn't really that achieve that objective for me. We need to there's, there is some stuff happening with a whole bunch of features that, <laughs> that that we may or may not be working on that touch the purge and systems like the purge. Um, the decay system is a bigger problem to solve. The purge is easier because it is it is. We can talk about it maybe in a different time. Maybe it's another good maybe it's another good subject for a blog post. I think it probably will be absolutely. Yeah. And uh, that puts it at about the end of our hour. And I uh, apologize if we didn't get to uh, your question because I'm sorry, we got I a lot of them. Much. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, and I think maybe at some point, maybe we should do like a two-hour Q and A stream, right, uh, stream or something, yeah, where yeah. people can submit questions, and we will also take questions from the chat. Um, but yeah, if you if you came in late, go back and check the vault because we did answer a lot of questions 
previously as well. Alex talked about some of the design philosophies behind the, the movement stuff and the rolling and the, the, the armor and all that kind of things. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, we will obviously do like future Q&A streams like this in the future because it's important for transparency's sake. It's important to for us to be able to, to answer some of the, the feedback and questions that we get from people. But uh, uh, until then, uh, we're just going to leave it at that, I guess. Uh, tomorrow, there's going to be a... Interrupt for a second, Yes. We do not work in a bubble. We really, yes, really exactly. read the forums. We really, really play the game. We really, really watch your videos, especially the ones that make fun of us. Really watch them. <laughs> um, and we try to do as best we can in the time that we have. Yes. That's it. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, if you don't have time to watch an hour long video on YouTube, then our uh, good friend Multigun is going to write up an extensive uh, summary of everything we covered Hi, on the stream with uh, GIFs and video clips and all that kind of good stuff. Shout out to Multigun. And uh, tomorrow, Andy and Nicole are going to play uh, an, a Funcom uh, oldie but goldie, a Pocahontas game for the uh, Sega Mega Drive because uh, that's uh, oh, no, they wanted to really do a deep dive into our backlog. What was that? We have a working Sega Mega Drive somewhere. Uh, I think maybe they're uh, they're, uh, they're I, just, I think they're somewhere. Uh, I see, uh, uh, <laughs> sure, I see roll. No worries, rock and roll. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna be there because uh, that's our Oslo uh, Christmas party. So um, Andy and Nicole are gonna be there at least. So yes. tune in for that. And then uh, there's gonna be stream streams next week as well. And uh, so yeah, Alex, thank you very much for joining me, and thank you for, thank you for having me for answering uh, questions extensively. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on uh, Twitch and on YouTube and on Periscope. Sorry about the mixer stream not working. Apparently, it was disconnected from our restream client, but we'll get that fixed until next time. And so uh, we'll see you guys in about a week. Bye. Hadebra.